It's that time of year. And all those carols get stuck in your head. Like the one that goes, hang on for the loo. Oh, hang, hang, on on hang on for the loo. Hang on for the loo. Hang on for the loo. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Merry Christmas, Christina. Merry Christmas, Ricky. And Merry Christmas, Mystery Hands. Who says I got you something? Aw. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's Christina's just... first Christmas. I love that. <laughs> you shouldn't have. Aw. It's a pickle. It's beautiful, Ricky. Oh, thank you. We're going to play some reindeer games to see whose tree topper gets to live on top of the Loop Show Christmas tree. In every test, we'll see how well you can complete your Christmas task while blindfolded. Our special judges will let you know who is the winner for each round. Merry Christmas and get ready for some reindeer games. For this round, wrap the present in front of you. You have one minute, three, two, one, go! Wait, what do you mean by wrap? Oh, I can't get it open. This isn't my first rodeo in wrapping a present blindfold. Oh no, that was a tear. No, oh, 30 seconds. No, wait, stop. It's tearing. <laughs> oh, this is not gonna be good. Oh no, bueno. It's beautiful. Okay, okay stop. Oh. Well, uh, you had a bow on there, and now... <laughs> One point deducted. This is okay. Uh, I, I give it a solid uh, four stars. Ricky, wow. I gotta hand it to you, my man. Uh, the bow's sticking. I saw you tried with two. You got one, so you're 50% there on your original goal. Four and a half. I'll because, take it. Because you've got all sides wrapped except for one. Oh. This is the side you start on. It's, so, no. it's, it's like a little sneak preview. It's like the trailer before the movie. It's just no. like, what I could this mine. be? Mine, all well. sides were wrapped. Yours is almost not wrapped, so. Well, you picked it up. I did pick it up, that is true. Here you go. I got the line straight. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> that's, uh... Last year may have been the greatest Christmas of my life. My wife surprised me with a brand new PlayStation 5. Oh. This year? Dude, the only way she can top it is with a PS6. Early access, Christmas. All the gifts you could ever imagine. I love giving gifts. I love receiving gifts. I love thinking about gifts. But the greatest gift that's ever been given showed up 2,000 years ago, and it wasn't wrapped in you know, kittens, uh, it was actually wrapped in like a cloth diaper. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse 14 and 15, the apostle Paul writes this. God has given you grace that is better than anything. So let us give thanks to God for his gift. It is so great that no one can tell how wonderful it really is. Did you know God has given us a gift that is better than anything? It is so great that the biblical author Paul can't even find the words to describe how wonderful it really is. So what is this great gift and what does it have to do with Christmas? Well, Paul says that the best gift ever is grace that comes through Jesus. And it is so great because first it is free for everyone. Nobody is forgotten. When Jesus was born, it wasn't an exclusive drop for chosen people. He was born and given to us, all of us. Like if you look at the shepherds in the Christmas story, they were far from popular. They were outcasts and they got a glimpse of heaven on earth. They got to be an important part of the story. You see, the incredible gift of Jesus is for everyone. We all know the main cast of the Christmas story. We've got Mary and Joseph, and of course, baby Jesus. But when Luke sat down to write his account of Christmas, he made sure to mention an unlikely group of people. They were sheep farmers or shepherds. And at that time, they were overlooked and avoided. 
nobody thought they deserved attention. The night Jesus was born, the shepherds were watching their sheep do whatever sheep do at night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. This was terrifying. The shepherds and their flocks were speechless. Seeing them tremble, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. In other words, chill out. I've got a special message and I need you to share. Their jaws dropped. Not only was an angel singing to them, but they rarely got asked to do anything important. The angel continued and gave them specific details on how to find Jesus in the crowded town of Bethlehem. They jotted down Bethlehem, Savior, Baby, Manger on whatever shepherds quickly ride on. Then it got kicked up a notch. The angel's song hit a crescendo and the sky filled with a huge angel choir. The shepherds rocked out to a song like no other. When the angels left, the shepherds looked around and said, you heard the song, let's head to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. Because when an angel says go, you go. They went to Bethlehem, saw Jesus had arrived, met his sweet parents and went out to tell everyone they knew the savior was born. Everyone was amazed by the story the shepherds told. When God wrote his musical birth announcement, he didn't deliver it to popular celebrities or the local news. He gave his song to average shepherds who were minding their own business head down and rejected. He wanted forgotten people to be the first to hear the good news. Jesus is here. For this round, you're gonna build a snowman using what's in front of you. Okay. You have one minute. <clears throat> oh, ready? Three, two, one, go! All right. Woo! Oh, what in the world? <laughs> what? I what know. is that? I'm gonna resist the urge to get that content ID strike by singing, do you want to build a snowman? I will sing the more publicly domain appropriate song. Um, this is disgusting. Would you perchance care to oh, play it with weather? Would you like to play with weather? It's fun and fun to do. I think this is just mashed potatoes. Ah, that makes sense. Uh -huh. uh, oh, cold things. These are just frozen batteries, aren't they? You got batteries? I don't know, that's what they feel like. Oh, or carrots. Ooh, little arms. Ooh, and little sticks. Would you like to play with weather? It's fun and easy to do. Just go outside and find the weather. Time! Hey, Merry Christmas! Let's see what we got here. You guys can go ahead and take your blindfolds off so that you can know. see your beautiful snow people. All right, Aww. that one's looking pretty good. <laughs> so cute. That one's looking pretty good. Oh, All right, so we got some colorful cute. buttons over here. It's very you did a cute. Great job. <laughs> Thank I you. do like the twig arms over here. You found a twig? What are these mashed potatoes? Yeah. They are. They, oh, <laughs> don't eat them. They're not bad. Okay, when it comes to who won this challenge, yeah, man. I like the size of this little guy over here, but I like the colorful buttons on this guy over here. I'm surprised I got them both blue. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Color theory. It's a Christmas Ooh, miracle. I really don't know who would win this challenge. I'm going to give you both three stars. Since we're all winners here, I brought us a treat. Oh. It wouldn't be Christmas on the Loop Show without some candy canes. Aww. They're edible. Let's get into them. They're, they don't look they're like anything some, I've ever seen. They're kind of hard to... Do you do the, like, pop it, like, open like that? <laughs> There you go, as long as you got a piece of it. There you go, yeah. They smell real weird. Are they salmon? There's some special hot dog candy canes. Get into that. Mmm. Mmm. It They're... smells like something a cat would eat, but then... I don't really understand why these hot dog candy canes are so sweet. <laughs> it smells like something Try it with a the... cat would eat, but it tastes like something no one should eat. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Oh, we don't think this is breakable, do we? So the uh, better than anything gift we talked about earlier, it's free for everyone, which is awesome. And it's something that you need. You know, you can fill your life with stuff you want, but deep down you know it's not what you need. Like nothing in this world can ever fully satisfy the longing we have for peace or freedom or life. That's why everybody gets so jazzed about the birth of this one little baby, because it is through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that you can find what God knows you've been searching for. It's what we call salvation. Based on God's deep love for you, he gave you this free gift through Jesus. He doesn't want you to live in a life that feels broken. He wants restoration. He wants friendship. God gave his son Jesus so that we could experience his grace. 
This is the gift that you've been looking for. You're doing fantastic. You really are. Okay, for this round, you're gonna stick the red nose on the reindeer. Here are your noses. Now find the reindeer. You have one minute. Okay, ready? Okay. In three, we're gonna turn you this way a little bit. Three, two, one, go! Okay, I'm just making sure where you were. How big is it? Do we know what a reindeer is? Uh, you're Beyonce. Wait, I don't think this is the right direction. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, is this the reindeer? Where are you? Oh, I just took a seat. All right. Oh, you're in the, I thought I was totally going for the normal area. I have no ah. idea. What? No. Oh, I'm stepping on you. What are you doing down there? <laughs> okay. I have close tears. What are you doing? Wait. <laughs> what was that? No way. Did you actually get a reindeer? There's no way. <laughs> what are you doing? There's I'm no so way. I'm so scared. You cannot be serious. There's no way. Take your blindfold off. Did you actually get a reindeer? Christina, take your blindfold off. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry for oh, screaming. This doesn't feel real. Yeah. This that feels like so cool. This feels like this is like a stuffed animal. Oh, I think I accidentally put my hand in its nose. <laughs> Ricky. This is such an unexpected surprise. My first Christmas with a real reindeer. How cool is that? It's like we're gonna play sardines with the reindeer. Are there other reindeers hiding right now? Let's go play sardines. This is literally unbelievable. Imagine your friend invites you to a party. You arrive and there's lots of people, decorations, food and drink. There's enough for everyone. When you're hosted by someone that generous, you don't have to worry about your needs. You can just enjoy yourself and focus on the people around you. Yeah, that's what a good host wants for her guests. And this is the picture of the world that we find in the Bible. Creation is an expression of God's generous love. He's the host and humans are his guests in a world of opportunity and abundance. And we're called to keep the party going, to spread his goodness. This is a beautiful picture, but it's not the way people experience the world. Rather, we find a world of scarcity and struggle, not abundance. And Jesus grew up in that kind of world, under military occupation, people losing their land or families to debt and poverty. And yet he would say things like this, look at the birds. They don't store up food for themselves, yet they have enough. Or consider the wildflowers. They're beautiful and abundant, and they don't stress about their existence. And you all should live that way too. But living generously doesn't mean life is gonna go well. I mean, look at Jesus. He was betrayed by his friends and he suffered. And this was no surprise to Jesus. He knew that people would take advantage of his generosity. In fact, that was his plan. Really? Yeah, think about it. Jesus knows that we're all hopelessly deceived by this lie that there's not enough. Yeah, that lie needs to be defeated. And so that's what Jesus was doing when he gave us the gift of his life. Jesus' death was the ultimate expression of God's generous love. Yeah, God's love can turn death into life and scarcity back into abundance. Or as the Apostle Paul put it, you know the gift of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, that even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And Jesus called his followers to live like the real party has begun. Yes, he called it the kingdom of God. And our invitation to this party is yet another gift, the personal presence of God's own spirit that can teach us how to trust the generosity of the host, just like Jesus did. Yeah, and when you believe there's enough, you start seeing opportunities for generosity everywhere with our time and money, our attention. Yes, one of the most important ways that we can experience the abundance of God's new creation is sharing with others because of our trust that God is the generous host. I'll, uh, I'll take that one. Ooh, we'll, we'll come back for that one. Uh, so we've been talking about the better than anything gift that God has for us. First, we talked about how it's free for everyone. 
Second, we talked about how it's something you need. Now for point number three. Can you guess what it is? Anybody? The third thing you need to know about this better than anything gift is that it is meant to be shared. Jesus taught us how to see the world through generosity. He's like a great party host that has more than enough for everyone. And we are like his party guests in a world of opportunity and abundance. And we're called to keep the party going, to defeat the lie that there's not enough. Jesus gave us the gift of his life and an ultimate expression of God's generous love. You see, when you believe there's enough to go around, you start seeing opportunities for generosity everywhere. We trust that God's generous love has given us all we need and we share it. This better than anything gift of grace is something that we love to give away. So let's look at that verse again. 2 Corinthians 9, 14 and 15 tells us that God has given you grace that is better than anything. So let us give thanks to God for his gift. It is so great that no one can tell how wonderful it really is. So give thanks. God's free gift of grace is for everyone. It's what we all need and it is meant to be shared. You want the best and God was willing to give you the best because he loves you so much. There are no words to describe what a gift that is. Merry Christmas. Okay, so we are here with Richard and Styx, the reindeer. Thank you so much for, Thank for, you for having us. Styx. Yes. I've never met a reindeer in real life, so my first question is, what do reindeers eat? So most people think reindeers eat carrots. Reindeers don't have upper teeth, so they can't actually chew a carrot. Wild peppermint is their preferred food. That's why candy canes are peppermint flavored. No way. Huh, it's one of the few plants that actually grow in the Arctic. That is so cool. It is so much fun getting to celebrate the best gift ever. Yes, and God's grace is better than anything. And it's meant for everyone. And we all need it. And it's meant to be shared. What a gift. Tis the season of giving. Aw. Merry Christmas, Loopsters, and... Enjoy, Enjoy the ride! Can we take it like a Christmas card Absolutely, picture? Absolutely, we can take a Christmas card. Okay. <gasps> yeah. If y'all right. want to kneel down right in front of him here, I'm going to spin okay. him around and get him out of your way. So, you... so hang on for the loop. Hang on for the loop. He, he did, didn't say he it. He didn't say it. So hang on. Hang on. <laughs> for the loop. For the loop. <laughs>